Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago. We continue to look at uh, some of the issues affecting life in Trinidad and Tobago, specifically uh, what's taking place with the economy. We spoke about the fact that the IADB expects a major deficit. Almost 8 to 9% of the country's GDP will now be a deficit, and this is based on predictions of a three- to six-month COVID-19 lockdown. Social distancing has proven to be one of the only mechanisms to really and truly combat this uh, unknown enemy that the world is now facing together. But in the midst of all of that, very vulnerable countries like ours, and we're talking about vulnerable uh, economies which depend on so many external factors, we need to get things back up and running at a reasonable pace, but also have conversations about what our economy will look like post-COVID. How do we adapt to this and how do we move forward? Also, several members of the business community have spoken about inefficiencies, the lack of cooperation, the lack of effective competition to really and truly give us the competitive edge to move forward. Gabriel Farah is joining us on the line. He's the CEO of the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce, representing some of the largest business entities in the country. And VAT refunds continue to be a problem plaguing the business community. You may remember that uh, recently the Minister of Finance announced VAT refunds to those who falling under a particular category in immediate effects and also to sort out the rest understanding that cash flow is an important lifeline at this time where businesses are all facing a reduction in revenue however according to the business community things are not coming as quickly as they would like it to come for them to be comfortable Gabriel good morning how are you good morning Hema uh, thank you very much for having me now, first of all, we know when the Minister of Finance gave the announcements about three or four weeks ago, there was a lot of excitement from the business community. Everyone welcomed the initiative. What is the latest on the stimulus package that was offered, particularly those initiatives and incentives offered to the business community? Well, Hema, you know, it's interesting to use the term stimulus package. Um, as you may remember, we thank the Minister for paying us our battery funds. And many of my members asked me, they said, how could you how could the government consider paying us the money they owed us for two government administrations? Because this is not this government, this is the previous government also. And call that a stimulus package. This is money they owed us, and they owed us interest, and they're not paying the interest. So, yes, we some people have gotten money. Unfortunately, I'm being called by so many people who are still waiting for their battery funds. And what we're really trying to understand is what's the status we know some of these smaller people have gotten now we want to know about the larger refunds now you talk about so when you say some people have gotten can you give me an idea as to how many of your members have said okay we've gotten it how many are still outstanding is it that the small and medium businesses have gotten and the larger ones which the government did say i will have to wait a little longer for them to work out the financing on it correct um from our understanding in talking to our members i would say probably a couple hundred have received VAC refunds. Um, we understand that according to the information posted that probably, um, I think it's 3,000 VAC refunds were issued. Unfortunately, those 3,000 VAC refunds are really the $1,000, 5,000, probably up to, my understanding, about $300,000 in VAC refunds, you know, someone who, who is owed that. However, coming up on the 25th of this month, companies have to pay that, right? So on the 25th of this month, the companies have to pay that. They have back refunds outstanding and they don't have any updates on it. And that's what we're trying to understand. The VAC bonds itself, I know that you also expressed some concern. You in particular um, did not see it as a sweetener deal the way the government described it. What was your issue and what is the status of that? Well, it, I think what has happened is originally in October last year, let's understand we are in April, in October last year, the government, after much um, pressure by the chamber, because we are a strong collective voice and we advocate on behalf of the business community, they said they're going to do VAT bonds. They then issued, they then said they'll do a VAT bond at 1.5%. Now, it's old news. At 1.5%, it means the money that they took from compliant taxpayers are going to give them 90 cents on the dollar as opposed to paying them interest 
That has changed. They have said they're going to, they're going to give VAT refunds and they're going to issue a bond at a rate that will allow people to convert it to cash at par. And that's after, of course, a fair amount of pressure from the TNT chamber. However, those bonds are taking, they said they'll have it by the end of the month. What's happening the end of the month is before the next VAT cycle, the payment is due. So people have VAT to pay, but the government has taken their money for two years, three years, four years, and they have no update on those bonds. I mean, I've been following the minister quite, um, quite assiduously looking at what he's saying, and I, I know he gave, he gave out food cards this weekend, but what I don't know is what's the status of the VAT bonds, and that's what many businesses are asking about right now. Is that you're asking for moratorium on the payment of taxes and VAT for this period? <laughs> you know, Hema, yes. Very shortly, very short statement, yes. When the government needed money, when the government needed $10 billion, it's $10 billion, Hema, $6 billion in VAT refunds, and probably another $3 billion in amount owed to suppliers. So it's VAT refunds, tax refunds amongst the suppliers. They didn't ask to take it, they just took it. Now we have people whose businesses are closed. We, and, you know, we continue to say we don't want a moratorium on VAT or moratorium on tax for the entire trend and Tobago. There are businesses that are generating and showing huge profits. Let those people pay. But when you close a business down, when you tell, when you tell 10,000 businesses close down, for the month of April, and you say, by the way, pay me the tax and the VAT you owe me. But for the past eight years, when governments have taken those same people's cash to fund their operations, is it really fair? I think all we're asking for, Hema, is empathy instead of apathy. You know, when you talk about the the road to recovery and the conversations about reopening and what is our new economy going to look like. In the U.S., it's become such a divisive conversation and a highly politicized conversation. That's obviously because an election is on the way and everyone is mixing politics with the dialogue. Is, you know, looking at, we have this committee that has been set up to talk about the road to recovery. Do you think that this committee will convince the government in the next week that this is the angle or this is direct, the direction that they should take to protect the business stability of this country? Hey, Ma, I think I've heard the talk about is it made up of the right people? Should there be more of this or more of that? We have a committee. Let's ensure, I, I think there's some amazing people on the committee. And I expect that unlike some government ministers who don't know what they don't know, most of the people on this committee have the competence and the experience so they know what they don't know and they'll reach out to the people they need to to get the information and get the right direction i'm i'm hopeful i am i am hopeful that the government will listen to this committee unlike other committees what we what i expect is that they recognize that businesses Every one of the thousands of businesses in Trinidad contribute positively to this economy. They're in the ways of employment, or in the way of tax paid, or in, in, the way that, in the way that they generate VAT for the government. So I am confident that this committee will try to do the right thing. I've, I've spoken to one or two committee members. And what we have to understand, Hema, today is that we have over 100,000 people unemployed. 100,000 people unemployed. If we continue the way we are at the end of May, that could be 150,000 people unemployed. The government really has a couple of options. Either really implement a proper finance support package. Don't give me back my VAT. Don't call that a financial stimulus package. That's money you owed me, and you're not even giving me interest. Deal with it, or they're going to have to deal with the repercussions of a 40% employment. Maybe look at some sort of stage opening. And, and we have to be very careful, but they must have strict sanitation and social distancing protocols. When you talk about deal with it now, you know, because obviously the unemployment issue, I know a number of business persons have said that this was not a stimulus package. Paying me back what is owed to me is not giving me something to stimulate the economy. Um, I know very early on the business shows we interviewed uh, Arthur Lovejack who said this is the time for government to stimulate growth, it's time for businesses to stimulate. But you have, the government alone didn't do that. 
Mr. Farrier, they had the banks, they sent a signal, you had adjustments with uh, monetary policy where the government indicated to the central bank and the banks then gave some sort of leeway. I understand that the banks not only gave moratoriums on the loans, but also uh, the lending is supposed to be at a better rate to allow businesses to stay afloat. So it's not just giving, saying the government, but maybe the, is it that they have not created that enabling environment? What else did you expect? Let me put it this way. So, you know, it's so interesting. Yesterday, a businessman called me, and I want to thank the banks for what they have done. But the businessman called me, and this is this is it's interesting. He said, he said, you know, Gabriel, I had a load for 36 months for three million dollars for a building I built. You know what this you know what this stimulus package was? They told me, don't pay my interest for three months, <clears throat> but I'm going to charge you interest on that interest, and I'm adding three months onto your loan. So I don't know if that's a stimulus package. I mean, my son lives away, and the government gave him a loan, gave him a loan, and told him 25% of that loan is forgiven. That's a stimulus package. Yeah. The, I, government, I, the government says keep, keep people employed, keep people employed, and we'll pay 75% of your wage bill. That's a stimulus package. When you encourage businesses to lay off people because the only way they're going to get money is through unemployment relief grant, why not incentivize businesses for keeping people employed? I mean, I don't know. Somehow or another, I'm, I'm hopeful this committee has some bright people on it. I'm hopeful this committee will know what they don't know and do the right thing. You know, you talk about the unemployment. So currently we're looking, you're saying probably we're going to see a 40% unemployment rate in this country within the next month. Is it that your members are saying that they cannot afford to keep their staff bill or their wage bill right now? Well, think of a business that's closed for over a month, no income, but they have to pay VAT on income they generated in January and February and they don't have the money. Many small businesses, Hema, many small businesses live with two weeks worth of cash or one month worth of cash. They don't, they, you know what someone told me? They actually borrowed money from their parents to pay their salary, to pay their employees part of their salaries. This is the real, I'm not, let's understand, I'm not talking about Republic Bank and Massey and, and Samakal and, and Agostini. I'm talking about the thousands and thousands of small businesses that are living day to day and need support. That's what we're talking about. I know in the U.S. that uh, there is a stimulus package that the, the Congress is expected to roll out today, if I'm mistaken, for small and medium enterprises. Uh, also, you have government-backed loans, where the government has taken up the loan and has guaranteed the loans for businesses. Is it something like that you were looking towards? That, you know, that's what we're looking for. That's the type of support. That's the type of support we need. Give me back my back, back refund is not a stimulus package. Doing something that says we're going to do a we're going to do a government back loan. We're going to support you. We're going to, if you keep your people employed for the next three months, we will pay 50% of their salaries. But you know, it's not as sexy. I saw on someone's um, Twitter page there they they promoted that they were giving out food cards. You know, it's so much nicer for a politician to go to his constituency office and give out food cards because the politician believes that there's a certain amount of obligation when I give you a food card. If you give a business a food card, those employees are voters too. Let, let's, let's keep people employed. Now, if it is that you don't get this support, Gabriel, what is the economy, what is the reality facing your members? You say that members have already told you that they cannot, they cannot sustain their wage bill or their staff contingent. You're saying that possibly we could look at a 40% unemployment rate in this country by May if things are not done. Tell me, top two things you want to see done by this committee before we wrap this interview. Well, I think a lot more engagement with the business community. I, I actually believe, Emma, quickly, I actually believe that this country, due to the largesse that we have operated in before, a simple thing your previous um, person talked about the Procurement Act. You would have read a story that the proper implementation of the Procurement Act would save this country $5 billion. Yeah. It's languishing because the, the government is not getting what they want. 
the TTRA, the Trinidad Tobago Revenue Authority, just by implementing that, we could double our tax income. Now, it's not going to happen today, but those things, those two things, can have significant benefit. I, I firmly believe, Hamer, that Trinidad is going to come out of this stronger. I believe that we're going to have to rethink the way we do business. This is not a Trinidad phenomenon. Every business, every brand has to rethink food security operating models. You know, you talk about food security, Gabe, and I know we're running out of time, but uh, agriculture and food security, how is it going to be adequately addressed by a committee? And I'm not casting aspersions because I have the greatest respect for every member of this committee. I think they have served well. I would have probably had more women because, you know, that's an issue that I would fight till forever. But um, I, I, do you think that that issue is, is going to be properly ventilated by the men and limited women on this committee? Yes, I do. And the reason I believe that, Hema, as I said before, the people there know what they don't know. And I know that people on that committee have reached out to people in the agricultural sector and the manufacturing sector and the technology sector to start understanding what's required. And that's what we need. We need more collaboration. We don't need the aloofness, the arrogance. We need people to reach out and work together because ultimately, we can win this battle if we have if we have that level of collaboration now you know you talk about the representation it was it not strange that none of the chambers were part of this committee um i am i am fairly confident that based on my tone sometimes in the media i mean i i've heard a minister tell someone that you chose the wrong person to advocate on your behalf and that's why you didn't get what you wanted. So I'm, I don't hold a grudge. I, I, I don't, I, I'm not against any political party. And if the people they have chosen, all I want is I want them to do something. So it's not, I don't need to be there. We need people, and I must say, I've seen some, you know, some strong people there. I just hope the government listens to them. That, that, that's what I hope. That's what I hope. That's my hope as well. What is, you know, the road to recovery? Because I speak about the IADB report uh, where yeah. they said that um, our revenue could be down by about 30 to 40 percent from gas exports alone. Uh, the deficit may go up to about 9 percent. And that's based on projections it, because we're operating in the dark. No one really knows how this is going to continue manifesting itself. The price of oil on the WTI this morning is between 13 to 14 US dollars a barrel to give you an idea of what we're dealing with. Now, when you look at, at the composition of the committee and moving forward, when is the right time to start having a conversation to reopen businesses? Because we understand that this is, also, this is a health issue protecting the population, and we cannot afford the population to crumble, but also the businesses. It's also an economic situation as well. Emma, there's no, you can't take what they're doing in the U.S. or what they're doing in Jamaica. Each country has its own unique situation. If we had the kind of money Canada or the U.S. had and we could support businesses, we could keep them closed for three months and pay for their wages, pay for their rent, pay for their interest. Great. We don't have that. So what it means is we now have to balance opening businesses probably on some sort of stage basis. You know, as someone told me the other day, they have a, a store in Trinidad, a, a furniture store. And they said, you know, I can't sell furniture in Trinidad because I'm a non-essential. But you know, I saw a company, I saw a van drop a TV for someone that they bought from the States and the person got their TV. But I can't sell, I can't sell my TVs. So we have to look at how we can stage those businesses, maybe allow businesses to start opening. If your car breaks down today, or if your fridge breaks down today, do you know that it's illegal? for that person to come and fix it. Let's start opening those businesses. Proper hygiene, proper sanitation, proper social distancing. I want to make one last statement. I can guarantee you, out of this will come new ways to work, new ways to entertain, new ways to vacation. I don't think people understand how this single event is going to fundamentally change the world we live in. Well, we are living at a time when we're going to see the world entering a new phase. But I want to return as we wrap this interview, Gabriel, about the unemployment figures, because persons listening to this this morning, while we can be optimistic and see the silver lining, we can say that things are going to get better, that we will see the opportunity in crisis and every other business proverb that they teach us in school. Um, 
the reality is there are people and their employers who cannot pay their staff. So you sell them, okay, I can't, and they're letting them go. What are some of the options that they are looking at now before they let their staff go? Is there anything at all to buffer them? Some of the businesses have a little more capacity, uh, actually, paying part salaries, right? So uh, people, are, businesses are making efforts, Seba. They're really making effort. What is, what is disheartening is when a business has $50,000 left in their, in, their, in their bank, and the government says, I don't care, pay me my taxes, pay me my VAT, and they've kept that money for four years. They took your VAT and your taxes for four years, and that business is closed. That's what's hurtful, but I am confident. I believe that this committee is going to look at staged reopening of businesses, starting maybe as early as the end of April. I'm not talking about opening everything. I'm talking about opening on a phase basis so that people can start getting back to work in a very controlled environment. And I feel that we can, we can overcome this. We just need the government to display, and I'm going to continue to use that word, more empathy than apathy. Here, I want to thank you very much for taking your call this morning and sharing your views on that. Gabriel Faria, they're the CEO of the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce, sharing his thoughts. Uh, he said if things are not done properly in the right manner, that we can look at a 40% unemployment rate in this country. He said businesses are trying their best to keep their staff levels up, but they simply cannot do it. And he rubbished the claim that this was a stimulus package. According to him, paying me what you owe me is not stimulating the economy. We take a very short break. When we come back, we continue to have discussions and conversations here on The Morning Brew. I hope your morning is going quite fine.